Praxinus quadrangulata, blue ash. This is a critically endangered species, so I'm excited to plant this. Never grown ash before. Ash is not really a California tree. Um, it's more of an East Coast, more Midwestern Appalachian, um, depending on the species. It could be East Coast, Appalachian, Midwestern. Um, but uh, California has the luxury of not having emerald ash borer. And so that's kind of where my mind is with this is uh, if I could grow some ash uh, in California and keep it away from the emerald ash borer, then we could potentially serve as a little repository of genetics for ash trees. Uh, so like I said, Fraxinus quadrangulata, this is blue ash. Uh, it's a native of Appalachia, like the Kentucky, Tennessee region. Uh, like I said, critically endangered. Um, the leaves are used to make a blue dye. Apparently, you can kind of crush up the leaves and leach out a sort of blue color. And so you can actually make a blue dye out of this, uh, out of the leaves of this tree, which is just fascinating to me. Um, it says here, um, stratification, warm stratify for 60 days, cold stratify for 60 days. So warm stratification is anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius or about 60 to 70, deg 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And as luck would have it, that's basically the temperature that is most common here in our area. It's pretty much always between 60 and 70 degrees. Um, and so I'm just going to set these in some soil, uh, moist soil, uh, and let them hang out for two months. So I'm going to do that scarification first, which is soak in water for 24 hours. I'm just going to dump, dump a bunch of these into a uh, bowl with water. Let them soak up that water for 24 hours. And then, like I said, I'll pot them up in soil, stratified, right, layered. Uh, it won't be one per pot or anything. It'll just be layers and layers of these things. Um, and then uh, stick them in a nice out-of-the-way place where they can warm stratify. All right, so there they are. This is the scarification. So just put a bunch of water in there. They're all just kind of floating in there and they'll be in there for 24 hours. All right, little label here so I can keep track. So I've got three different ash species that I'm gonna be scarifying and stratifying. There we go. So there's the blue ash. I'm really excited about this one. Next up is Fraxinus excelsior diversifolia. So same deal, soak in water, let stand in water for 12 hours instead of 24. Warm stratify for 30 days, cold stratify for 60 days. All right, now last up is Fraxinus latifolia, Oregon ash. And this species is not endangered. So this is just, um, I'm planting ash trees, so I just decided to get several different varieties. I've got to soak in water for 12 hours, warm stratify for 30 days, cold stratify for 60 days. Okay, so there's my ash. Blue ash, European ash, Oregon ash. So I'm excited to grow ash trees for the first time this year. All right, so here I am in the barn. And I've got this uh, screened compost. This is municipal compost. Um, you can check out my video where I screened this out from, a, from a, a batch. It's pretty nice. I screened out a lot of the coarse material and I have a lot of the finer material left over. So um, I'm gonna use this for the warm stratification and the cold stratification for that matter. About a third full. And I'm gonna start layering in seeds. Um, so I'm gonna put more soil on top layer in more seeds, more soil, more seeds. Hi, Sandy. Hello, friend. Oh, excuse me, friend. Oh, hi. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, hello. Hello, friend. So I have my three buckets for my three different types of um, ash seed, and I'll go ahead and start layering in the seeds now. All right. Oh God, I spilled it. <laughs> so I've got my uh, duct tape label here and I will 
transfer this over to the pot. Not being too precious here with trying to get these all nice and evenly spread out there. A little bit clumpy. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Next up, this uh, compost is really dry and hydrophobic. And so to get it fully saturated, what I do is I fill a bucket and then I'll just put the um, plant pot inside that water and slowly over time it'll absorb the water and it will uh, drop down, you know, it'll get heavier and heavier, it'll drop down and it'll fully saturate as it goes down into the bucket. Um, and so this takes a little while, you know, come back and check it in like 30 minutes or so. All right, so next up, I am going to cut some black plastic here. I want to keep the light out of the, out of the uh, plant pot, and I also want to keep the moisture in. And so I'm going to cut some strips of plastic here, squares of plastic. All right, so this is settled in now. Uh, the water's filtered all the way up. Um, it's just a little bit below the surface of the soil here. I'm gonna fill it up just a little bit more. Um, but then, yeah, so this is, uh, I'm gonna let it sit for a while and kind of let some of that stuff saturate. Um, instead of just being wet on the surface, I'd like it to actually saturate into the organic matter. All right, well, it's the next morning. I got caught up with stuff yesterday and uh, didn't get back around to this, but you can see, fully saturated now and so I'll take this out all right next up is the European ash or the Oregon ash um, I'm gonna take this piece of plastic bag nice thick plastic to block all the light because um, this compost uh, there's some other stuff mixed in here that's not sterile and so there there is some seed uh, some weed seed in here that I don't want to germinate so I'm gonna take this nice thick plastic and tape it over the over the uh, plant pot to keep the light out. Since this is gonna sit for literally about five months, I don't want anything germinating in here. So I'm gonna cover this, keep the light out, and that should do the trick. Covering it in this way is also gonna keep the moisture in um, and reduce the number of times that I have to water. I will come through and water periodically for a couple of reasons. First of all, you wanna keep the soil moist, but also uh, you'd like to refresh the air uh, since this is going to be covered, the air inside of it of here is going to get kind of stale over time. Uh, I want to go through and water, and as the water filters through all that pore space, it's going to push the old air out, and it's going to refresh it with nice new air um, to kind of um, give the seeds nice fresh oxygen to, to use as they, um, as they stratify. All right, here they are. Oregon ash, European ash, blue ash. And then after that, pretty much, I'm just gonna let them sit here. Here in coastal California, um, we have very mild temperatures. Uh, warm stratification should happen anywhere between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna let them hang out um, in the barn here and just, that's pretty much the ideal temperature for this warm stratification period. The nice thing is, after we move into winter, the temperatures will drop, and I believe it should get cold enough for an actual cold stratification as well. So I think I'm just going to leave these in here for uh, the winter, and then plant them out in about February in the greenhouse, and I think that's going to be sufficient for the cold strat uh, warm stratification followed by cold stratification. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for coming along.